Hey everyone, I'm back. It's been a little while, so I've got a video of a Range Rover L494. I had a small issue with the front bumper, uh, the colour was slightly off. Initially it was a new bumper, repair lamp, put the bumper on, it's off colour. So we've blended into the wings here uh, with the bumper, so I'm just showing you through the process of me making this bumper match by using an aerosol on the sides and then blowing it through the wings to make a good match for the customer. Hope you enjoy it. Here we go then guys. Um, a little backstory on this one. It came in for a headlight repair and the front bumper, new front bumper. Uh, we painted it. I didn't really film it because there wasn't much to look at. It was just a factory primered front bumper quick bit of colour, put it back on the car, no problems. Um, but then we put it on the car and noticed it's too dark for us to, to think it was acceptable. So what we've done here is we've got the car in the booth, we've prepped the wings, we've re-prepped the front bumper, and now we're ready to blend into the wings with the same colour, just to ensure that a good match. But what you will notice at the end is it is still slightly darker than the wings, even though we flicked them in at the same time. Um, this can be quite a, a problem on some cars. You know, I've seen some horrible ones out there. There was one uh, seen a little while ago, Range Rover Evogue, uh, the goldy bronze color, and that was terrible. Even though it was all painted at the same time, you could the, the plastics just throwing the metallic off for some reason. So. Uh, we we got it this time. We got it a bit better. Like I say, it was still a little dark, but it was acceptable. Uh, the customer was happy when they got the car back, and I've also recorded the headlight repair as well. So I'll chuck that up as well, probably in the following video. It, just try and keep the times down on these. So what I've done here, as usual, I'm panel wiping it, solvent and water this time because they're sealed surfaces and. The solvent won't affect anything on there. It's, it's quite a strong one we use. Um, it, it tends to take off aerosol primers and bus throughs, so we'll get this car ready first. And you see, I'm just going over here with the water and a microfiber cloth. Make sure it's nice and clean, as little contaminants as possible. Let me know in the comments if, if you guys, do you, do you prefer normal tack rag or do you like using the microfibers as well? I know it's becoming more and more common. I see a lot more people using them. Um, I, I, I don't mind either way. You know, if I haven't got a clean rag with me, I will just go in the cupboard and get a tack rag out. It's not a big problem, but I do prefer the microfibers. I think because they're designed to pick up dust, you know, for general cleaning, it, they, they lift things away from the surface rather than just moving them around. I suppose that's what tack rags are for as well, but uh, I like the microfiber anyway. Um, also, I'll stick a link in the description, and then that way, if you want to pick up some of these as well, we've got an Amazon link. you just see as well the, the amount of time that I spend cleaning I've left it in I do speed it up on a lot of videos but you can see I'm just tucking any wires out of the way just this is the final thing before you start lashing the color on so I'm just making sure that this is as clean as possible it keeps the dirt down it keeps everything as clean as possible I, I know some people just blast through it and quickly you know they want to get on with it and get to the next job but I've always said it, extra 10 minutes in here saves 20, 30 minutes polishing. So you'll see I'm just turning the rag inside out here and I'm going to use it as the tack rag as well. Nice high pressure blower as well. You want, you want as much air out of that blower as possible. Um, I always think that because it's a lot higher than the pressure that I'm going to be spraying at, it should, you know, my spray gun's not going to kick up any more dirt than this wheel. So, again, catching it all in the microfiber and we're good to go.
So that's all the cleaning done now. I'm just going to run over it with the uh, Ion Star um, anti static gun. These things are fantastic, it just stops any static buildup that we're getting on the panels. And they, they also help to contribute to keeping the dust and dirt nibs down. So, anything that I can do to make my jobs cleaner and better, then that's what I'm going to do. And again, I'll mention it again, we're, we're five minutes in now and I'm still cleaning, it's still part of my cleaning process, so... That's, you know, how we're achieving good finishes, with everything is as smooth as possible, you see, just checking in there. But if everything's as smooth and as clean as possible, the, all you're laying on top is paint, so as long as you're not doing something crazy and, and causing, you know, sand piling and things like that, then your paint just goes on flat your lacquer goes on flat and then you've got a nice finish so here we come with the uh, bus through uh, this I'm using this because it doesn't leave an edge I don't have to sand it but what I'm doing is I'm coloring the edges of the bumper and the wings just to make sure that they are uniform and I was thinking that that would help me keep the color um, and the same you know it's the same primer the same gray essentially although this bumper is slightly darker I thought this would help me transition the base coat into the new base coat into the old and bring the colour in a little bit better. And you'll see them spraying at 2 bar, which is 29 psi, with uh, 1.3 Walcom. And I'm just giving the primer a little chance to dry. It does dry pretty quick, but you don't want to you don't want to be putting water base over a wet solvent, so. And then my spraying's the same as well. I'm trying not to. Um, I don't want to go over the same things over and over. I feel like it, it gets a bit stale, but I repeat the process. This is what works. So every video, I'm doing the same thing. Nice light coat. Start with your. Um, it's almost like your effect coat first with this standoff. Nice light coat first. And then come back in with the wet coat. And here as I was toying with the idea of just blending into the the bumper the same, but I realized later on I've actually got enough base coat to do this whole bumper. So we just blew over the whole bumper. It was easier. You see now I'm going over the other side now. But we, we do try to keep costs down as well, but for the sake of this being a, a better job, I, I just thought to myself, I had enough paint left and I'll, I'll blow over the whole bumper. And you see with the blend, I'm just being nice and light, bringing the old colour, or the new colour into the old, should I say. Just getting in those edges. I think there was a, a very small lacquer run in there, so just get a bit of colour in there. And then, like I say, I've realised here, I've got plenty of paint. I'll just blow over the front bumper, and then that way. There's no chance of seeing, you know, if the colour is different enough, from the dark, darker shade that was on it. I figured this way it'll all at least it'll be uniform. This is the same thing. Light coat first, then come back over it with a slightly wetter. And we do it all in one hit as well with standoffs. I don't know if you've seen in any of my other videos, but this is a sort of a light coat followed by a wetter coat and you just ensure in before you let it dry that it's uniform if it looks good while it's wet it will dry nice but if it looks patchy while it's wet it will dry patchy so it's a little bit strange it, yeah, this standox is similar to Spiesecker if anybody used a Spiesecker before the high tech so it's basically the same thing in a different can you just see in there, I'm making sure I've got all these edges. It was done before, but I'm just making sure I'm not... If I've not got any bus throughs, if you've left one in there and you're not... You miss it. And this is already essentially a rework. Because of the poor colour, I don't want to be having to go back in to fix a bus through. And painting the bumper for a third time. So just getting all your edges. Yeah, yeah, I'm just checking the blend, making sure it's all going in even.
here we go then. Lacquer time. Yeah, this is a three to one. Uh, I'm using 10%. Thinners on here. I find it, it just flows out a little nicer for me. The stand-ups, they recommend 5%, but it's, it's too peely for how I like my uh, paint finish, so. And I'll just come in, I'll do one light coat. Work my way around and then I'll come back over and give it the second sort of full um, gloss coat. And you see here again, I'm just taking my time, making sure I've got all my edges. Making sure that I've got the best finish possible. I tried to think as well, you know, is this, if this is my car, do I want it to go out like that, you know? If you, it's a little bit dry there, would I leave that? No, just spend, the, spend a few minutes making sure it's right. Making sure you're happy with your work. For me, at the end of the day, my name goes on all of these. I have to sign a job card to say I'm happy that that's good. And then should this car come back for any reason, they're going to look up the job card and go, oh, Paul's painted that, you know, that's... You know, if it's a paint issue, if not. I always get worried when you do see them come back through. Why is that back here? Uh, we had one the other day, a uh, Porsche. Luckily, it was just back in for a headlight. The headlight wasn't in stock. So we had to send the car back to the customer with... Uh, it was only a crack, but it wasn't... It wasn't like an MOT failure. So we sent the car out, and then it came back in the other day, and I was like, oh no, why is that here? Luckily it was just here because it needed the new headlamp and it was, it arrived, they'd got it in stock, sent it to us, build it back up. But like I say, I, I spend the time making sure it's right so I only have to paint it once. I hate reworking cars, especially if it's silly things. And that's why I panic when I see them back. <laughs> kind of get that bit of relief and go oh as long as it's not me as long as it's not my work on the car I'll be all right and you'll see here second coat if you look on the tape as well the masking tape around this wing you can see I've, I've not brought the blend very far over at all just enough for where it matches the bumper keeping the paint cost to a minimum and you see I'm just getting down checking that paint finish making sure I'm happy, making sure it's clean, there's no hairs, there's no inclusions that can be took out now. You know, if, if there's a hair in there, I can just pull it out with some tweezers and then blow a bit of lacquer over the top to help it flow out. But yeah, again, nice and steady. Watching this final coat go on, making sure I've got the finish that I'm happy with. In and out of all the edges again. You'll see, this is the thing that I was saying. You'll see I'm doing exactly the same thing as I've done on the last coat. I'm a bit like a robot with that. It's just the same, the same, the same. And that's why I've been struggling for content at the minute. I've, I don't want to keep posting the same thing over and over. It's, you know, yes, it's a different car and a different repair, but I do the same thing every time. I ensure the color match. I make sure it's right. I do my edges first, get in and out of all the areas. Um, like I plan a route around the car I started at the passenger's front wing well passenger in the UK um, but yeah start at the passenger front wing do that hit the bumper go around hit the other wing and then you know that's that's it I do tend to have a little eyes over when I'm finished just to make sure everything's how I want it but it's the same process every car every time there's, there's a I don't plan it per se, but I, you do everything the same. You've got almost a plan. Plan of action. Just see there, I'm just checking that wasn't as, as glossy as I'd hoped. You just see using the back of the glove there. Again, I do that in a lot of the videos, but this is this is why I'm struggling. 
with the content. I always, I'm doing the same thing. I don't feel like there's much, much else I can say, paint-wise. I'm going to start looking into doing other things, trying to bring a bit more prep into it. It is very difficult where I work because there's lots of registrations around in the workshop. They don't really want us to um, obviously show customers registration plates and things like that. So you have to be careful. Um, so I, I can't just set up a camera or walk around or, you know, being one of the paint technicians as well. We're always being asked questions and pulled away from the job. So that, that for me, it would make the content very inconsistent, but... Uh, I'm working on some stuff and I'll, I'll see if it's any good before I release it because I don't want to just be giving content that, that doesn't bring any value to anyone as if no one's going to watch it there's no point but you'll see here now I'm just checking again I'm happy with everything using the back of my glove I'm a happy checking in that edge not sure give it a little a little spray And again, what, what? There's, there's two minutes left, and I'm just just checking everything before it comes out. I don't want to don't want to let this go out and then realise there's a dry edge that you'll struggle to polish. Again, you don't want to be re-clearing this because it's because of something so silly as missing an edge. So just go around when you're done, have a little look, and then I'll post up a little bit of footage here. Had a little walk around the car afterwards. You'll see that the what I was on about earlier with the colour match on the bumper, it wasn't. Even though we flicked the wings, it still wasn't quite right. But again, it was acceptable. So we sent this one. The customer was happy, no complaints. You see, I'm just checking the finish. And that'll wrap this one up. So. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time, if you've made it all the way through. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that really helps me know that um, people are watching and they, they want more content, so let me know, hit that subscribe button, stick a like on it. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, I do appreciate the people that are watching these videos and uh, thank you very much. We'll see you in the next one.